So, a crisis. Insoluble problem. Major crisis. Both stepmothers want their names on the wedding invitation. Catherine adores her stepmother, who more or less brought her up. She wants her name on the invitation. She, she wants it. And the stepmother is not anticipating, which is understandable, since the mother is dead, not appearing next to her father, whereas my stepmother, whom I detest, well, it's, it's out of the question her name should be on the invitation. But my father won't have his name on it if hers isn't, unless Catherine's stepmother is taken off also, which is completely unacceptable. I suggested none of the parents' names should be on the invitation. After all, we're not adolescents. We can announce our wedding and invite people ourselves. So Catherine screams her head off, arguing that this would be a slap in the face to her parents who were paying through the nose for the reception, and particularly for her stepmother, who's gone to so much effort when she isn't even her own daughter. So finally, I let myself be persuaded, totally against my better judgement, because you know, she, she wore me down. Finally, I agreed that my stepmother, whom I detest, who's a complete bitch, will have her name on the invitation. So I phoned my mother to warn her. Mother, I said, I've done everything I can to avoid this, but we have absolutely no choice. Yvonne's name has to be on the invitation. She said, if Yvonne's name is on the invitation, then take mine off. I said, Mother, please, I beg you, don't make this even more difficult than it already is. She said, how dare you suggest that my name be left to float around the card like some abandoned woman below Yvonne, who'll be clamped onto your father's surname like a limpet. I said, Mother, I'm late for a meeting with friends. I'm going to hang up now, and we'll talk about this tomorrow after a good night's sleep. She said, why am I always an afterthought? I said, what are you talking about, Mother? You're not always an... She said, of course I'm an afterthought. And when you say don't make things more difficult, what you're really saying is everything's been cooked up. Everything's been decided behind my back. Good old Hougette, she'll agree to anything. And, and all this, she said, to put the old tin lid on it, in aid of an event, the importance of which I'm having trouble grasping. I said, Mother, I'm going to hang up now. She said, Ivan, up to this point, you have conducted your affairs in the most chaotic way imaginable. And just because, out of the blue, you've decided to embark on matrimony, I find myself obliged to have to spend all afternoon and evening with your father, a man I've not seen for 17 years, and who, by the way, I was not expecting to have to reveal my hip size and puffy cheeks to, not to mention Yvonne, who, incidentally, I may tell you, by the way, according to Felix Pirillari, has now taken up bridge. My mother also plays bridge. I see that none of this can be helped, but on the invitation, the one item that everyone is going to receive and examine, I insist on making a solo appearance. Catherine, who's listening on the extension, shakes her head in disgust. I say, Mother, why are you so selfish? I'm not selfish, Yvonne. I'm not, you're not going to start with that as well, are you? You're not going to tell me I'm selfish, like Madame Romero this morning, who said that I had a heart of stone. That's what Madame Romero said when I refused to raise her wages. She has gone completely mad, by the way. To 60 francs an hour, tax-free. She said that everyone in our family had a heart of stone when she knows full well about your poor uncle Andre's pacemaker. I noticed, by the way, you haven't bothered to call him, Ivan. Oh, yes, that's very funny, isn't it? Everything's a joke to you, isn't it? You've still got a lot to learn about life, my boy. Off you go, off you go. Go on, go on, go on. Go and see your precious friends. And she hung up. <laughs>